Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we've been looking at the BYD Han, which in my opinion should be maybe a scare to European car makers because this car starts at 70,805 euros. And there are no extra options that you can get apart from maybe a couple of colors, which there's two colors which are actually gonna cost you extra. However, this one that we have right here is in the space black color, which does not cost anything extra. This car is a real luxury car that we're definitely gonna take a look at from the inside because the inside is very special on this car. Like I said, 70,805 viewers and you basically get the full house. If you look at some comparison cars, for instance, an EQE from Mercedes, that's gonna start at around 65,000 euros. However, that's only gonna have around 276, if I'm to not totally mistaken, horsepower and this car is 517 horsepower with 700 newton meters of torque. To get some comparison, an EQE 43 AMG is going to set you back 105,000 euros and that has 476 horsepower. You could theoretically also get a BMW i5, that's also going to cost you around, around 100,000 euros but that's going to have 602 horsepower. However, this is going to be 30,000 euros cheaper and it has luxury chauffeur seats in the back. So let's take a look at it. One thing that this car, however, does not have is a front. If we open it twice, we can see we do have a two motor engine or two engines in here, so electric motors. That's going to be one for the front and one for the back, so therefore you also have all wheel drive. And if you look at this, there's a lot of wax under there. Jeez, okay, my. Oh wow. Um, you can see this is basically a hood that um, there is most likely the engine cover on, or the electric motor on there with your fluids that you have to put in there. So, a very clean looking front. And this car is supposed to be getting you from 0 to 100 in 3.9 seconds. It does also weigh 2.25 tons. That's due to the fact that it's an electric car with a big battery in it. But let's actually see if we can reach that. So we went into sport mode and we also turned on all these sport features that you can possibly get. You can also put on here like a lap timer. So we're going to quickly put that on and it's going to open up once we are stationary. So let's go stationary and see how fast we can accelerate from 0 to 100. And switch it over and there we go. Boy, and that acceleration really does kick off and those safety features, I love them. 4.45 seconds, the best we have been able to get was around... Yeah, I'm, it's just because I'm swaying so much, it basically is telling me to shut up. Um, best we were able to get was 4.36 or 3.5 actually. And that also claimed 4.2 and we got 4.45. We're gonna try it one more time to see if we can maybe get that value a little bit lower. Four point three seven, so basically the value we almost we almost got in the previous test. You, you well, on the real world test, I don't seem to be able to get three point nine. The best, like I said, three uh, four point three five was the best we were able to get. The design in the front also looks pretty interesting. We do have this a very big BYD logo on here, which obviously build your dreams. That's what BYD stands for. But in general, pretty futuristic design. One thing that you can also see is we do not have matrix lights in here. We do have just normal LED lights, which do work fairly decent. And we do also have a little bit of a small animation. If I open the car, maybe we can see that. There you go, and then it slides through, which is pretty cool. On the back, it looks nice, and we can also show it to you at um, dark, just so you can see a little bit better. But in here, we do have all real intakes, which are nice, so this also looks very futuristic. We do have a couple of also openings on the side, which is gonna lower the CV value to 0 0.233. And in general, it looks really nice from the front and fairly futuristic as well, which again, for 60 or 70,000 euros, it already designed from the outside looks pretty cool. If you go further onto the side, we can see that we have our 19 inch wheels on here, which do come standard with the Pilot Sport 4, which are pretty nice from Michelin. And we also have some fairly big brakes in here, which are the Brembo brakes. I did not find a distance for the claimed um, brake distance from 100 to zero or 60 to zero, but we're gonna test that out right now to see how low they can go. Definitely a little bit of sliding, but that's the fastest value we have been able to get, 2.54. Previous best rating was 35 meters, so maybe we can get a better value now. What did we get? 34 meters, okay, so that's fairly good. Um, for a 2.25 ton car, that's a fairly good ratio. If you move on further to the side, we can see we have the wonderful BYD design on the side here, which looks pretty cool, nicely integrated, automatically foldable side mirrors, as well as a camera below, because you do have a 360 degree camera, which is very nice. That also goes on when you have your indicator on, so you can see how close you are to the person beside you, or it's just a curb in general. We do also have keyless go, so if we press on this, it's gonna fold out, which is nice. Just some more aerodynamic features, and you can obviously close it as well if you just press on it once again. Tinted windows on the back, and you can definitely see if we start Step back a little bit. This car is insanely big. Four meters and 99.4, 4.995 meters, which is basically five meters. 
um, and it's very big. That also means you might have a lot of space in the back and we'll check that out in a second. And we also have this like design on the back with the chrome touches. If you want to get um, a more black touch, you can also get the emerald edition, which allows you to have basically everything in black with that beautiful red, uh, green color on there. So one thing that we do in here have is we don't have a normal um, lithium ion battery, but we have a lithium iron phosphate um, battery, which is different because you can, for instance, it doesn't explode, so there's no safety feature, uh, safety issues in there, and also is more capable of higher temperature and lower temperature just for safety reasons. However, it does not charge very well at high and low temperatures, and it well, it does have a really good loading cycle. So if you charge this thing around 10,000 times, it's still going to have around 75% of its um, power. However, we only have a loading speed of 120 kilowatts um, speed at max, which is not the fastest. We do also have a battery in here, which is 85.2 kilowatts an hour, and you can use 82 of those. So it's gonna take you around from 10 to 80% 40 minutes and 30 to 80% around 30 minutes. We're definitely gonna also test it out right now to see if that's actually true. Okay, so we just finished loading, or we are still loading, and we did go for around 45 minutes or 40 minutes. No, exactly 40 minutes now. And we are currently at 46 kilowatts, and we loaded a total of 54.6 kilowatts. And you can see it took us around 39 minutes and we are now at 80%. We started at around 22%. And if we go over to our loading curve, we can see on average we got around 82. That's what we got. And you can see it went up to 126. That was the max. And it stayed there for around, I'd say, 10, 20%. And then we went down to around 80 on average. Now it went up to around 82 on the end. So in total, we did get that 126 actually, not 120. We did go up to that value, but only for around 20%. So around from that 20 to 40%. And afterwards, you're going to be looking at 80%, uh, 80 kilowatts that you're going to be charging. So still a fairly good rate. It does have a claimed WLTP of 18.6 when you're using um, or you're combining it. When you're driving in city, it's around 14.6. When we look at what we have on the new energy and then the consumption, the car has a total mileage of 2,000. I'm sorry, I'm still holding the wheel, uh, the freaking steering wheel, but it's still gonna beep at me. 2,376 kilometers, and it has an average fuel consumption, or not fuel consumption, battery consumption of around 20.8 kilowatts an hour. Most of the people that have been driving it are gonna be driving it a little bit more sporty and therefore doing a lot of zero to 100 tests, driving sporty around the, um, the corners. And for a car that has 517 horsepower, 20.8 kilowatts an hour is a fairly good rate. Let's move on further to the back, where we can again see it looks fairly decent. We do have the light animation. Let's open that one more time to see if it works on the back. There you go. You get that red line going through. It's going to look better at night, so we'll definitely put a clip in there. But we do have a fairly big back, and these lights are, again, very nice. We have your Build Your Dreams up there, and also the Han 3.9S or 5. I don't know exactly what that stands for. Maybe it's an S or 3.9 seconds from 0 to 100. Um, which is cool and then down here we don't have the best build quality if you listen to this This is all hard plastic and it does fold in fairly far um, And the license plates also not the hardest on here that might be the case where it's a little bit more soundy But in general the crown sound quality not sound quality the build quality down here is not the greatest We also have this like fake diffuser with our reversing lights down there as well But in general a fairly decent looking back in my opinion these lights really look amazing at night in here We also have our trunk which is automatically foldable or automatically opal Opal, open. Um, in here we have a fairly small trunk space of 410 liters. If I take this out, you can maybe see it a little bit better. There's gonna be some stuff in there. Um, but that is only due to the fact that we can't flip over the back seats because we have the chauffeur seats. Therefore, you're not gonna be able to use any more storage space. And you also have your charging cable in here for your um, booster basically, so your DC outlet where you can just put that in. So 410 liters is not the biggest. You also don't have a trunk. Uh, you don't have a towing capacity because there is no tow option for this. And you don't have a roof capacity, which is due to the fact that we also have a panoramic window in here. Let's actually take a look at the best thing in this, which is the interior. And in here, you can definitely see that we have a lot of space and also because of that five meter of length. You can see, seat is adjusted to my liking, so a meter and 80 or five foot 11 or six foot almost. <laughs> and we do have quite a lot of space in here, foot space also plenty. But one thing that's also very nice is you can flip this down if you want. And in here, we have a little touch screen. So a little like iPad thing where you can slide and you can open it and you can basically adjust everything in here. You can adjust the temperature, which you can also do down here. 
which is nice so you can choose your climate control you also have the media selection where you can actually move, watch a movie on here or you can even um, change the music that's being played you can change the ambient lighting which is cool and the nicest thing is that you've heated and ventilated seats in the back as well and you can also adjust the space or the incline of your seat so if i press this i can go forward and i can also go backwards and you can already see, I can comfortably basically have a sleep in here because you have so much space. And if you want to sit here, this is the most luxurious seat because one thing that you can do is you can adjust the seat in the front so you can move it forward. Just so you have a leg room of basically a first class or a business class. You can also adjust the incline of it basically like in a freaking chauffeur, like an S class or an i7 or a 7 series, which is amazing. And these seats are really, really comfortable. You can also, we do have the sunshade or the sunroof in here, which is gonna allow you to go on here and you can open the sunshade. You can also open the sunroof, which is nice. And it just makes it so comfortable sitting in the back. Seriously, if you, most of you, most people are gonna scream, oh, shotgun when they get to a car. But in this car, I, I don't wanna be that person because I wanna sit in the back. This is the most comfortable seating position you can basically have. You can also have a little pass through in here. So if you do wanna put some skis or anything in there, you could theoretically have a little pass through through there. Um, which is gonna allow you to go skiing because you can put one ski in there. Seating position wise, these are like I said, really comfortable heated and ventilated seats, all amazing. Build quality as well. Look at that amazing build quality on the side. The only way we have plastic is down at the, um, at your music box or your sound system. And you can also um, incline and decline the seats from back here, automatic windows, which do not go all the way down. There's gonna be a little bit of um, an incline in there, but that's completely fine because you just sit so far back that it's not gonna really disturb you. So the front is also luxurious. You do have a fairly comfortable seats in here, which are also ventilated and heated, like I just said. And you can also see we do have a leather option here. You only get leather. The other option that you could theoretically get is an orange interior. We have the brown interior. Those are not gonna cost you anything extra as well. We do have, the center console in my opinion looks like a Mercedes GLC because they have this like same wood trim and also this opening in here with basically the same amount of well, two cup holders and then USB-C and a USB port as well as wireless, uh, not wireless charging but a place for your phone to go. Air conditioning in here and we do have a couple of piano black touches down here which is okay because there's not that much but you have a couple of settings on here like traction control, your drive modes and also your gear selector does have an ambient lighting feature on it so at night this is going to light up which is pretty cool and down here you have your wireless charging which does have a little bit of a weird issue because every time you put it in the whole screen just tells you wireless charging is active and you can't use it while, while that's showing you so for around four seconds you can't use the screen and sometimes it stops loading and it charges again but yeah. Like I said, we do also have a little bit of storage space right in here with USB-C and or well, just two USB ports and your SD card in there, a 12 volt port. And again, build quality in here is amazing. Steering wheel feels pretty nice. Some real buttons on here, which is good. And the D-Pilot logo on the bottom, which makes these, well, it's basically that drive assistant. And we also have a heads up display, which is very nice and a full digital cluster display, which we're gonna take a look at further when we're driving. Big display in the middle that we already took a look at. And then we also have ambient lighting through here and and also this impulse kind of um, ambient lighting which goes through the dashboard which is pretty cool at night we're gonna put some clips in there it looks very very nice wood and then just all everywhere you can touch is very good quality glove box is also fairly big so you can put your whole freaking children in there which is nice and just in general legroom in here again amazing also good build quality up there we have this wooden trim integrated with the lovely audio system which has like this cool suede design to it memory function electrical seats for the front as well this is a really really nice interior when we take a look at the infotainment display, you might notice, okay, this is a very Android-based system, and that's what it is. It also is a fairly old-looking Android system. It's most, it's, it looks like a Chinese Android system, which is, it looks fairly old, like 2010, something like that, which is not the greatest. You can see we do have a couple of things in here, Spotify, we do have Media Center, we have um, basically, you can listen to music via Bluetooth and stuff like that, but you do not have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which is unfortunate because that's the thing I use most of the times. The only thing that you have is you can go in here and then you can basically select music and you can go over the Bluetooth section and then you can have the, don't stop me now, beautiful. If you go back, we can see navigation is fairly decent. Um, it does, do its job and it is actually fairly smooth and works as well. Other than that, you do have a fairly decent sound system in here as well, which is the Dyn Audio, which has a 775 watt sound system. It's not the biggest, but it actually sounds fairly decent as well. 
But like I said, no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You also have a camera in here, which you can open up up there. And the quality is just not the greatest, but yeah. Um, you have the option to use some selfies in there as well if you want. But one thing that you do also have is the settings. And in here you can see that the only languages that you can actually choose from is Chinese, English, Spanish, and Norwegian. So you don't have German. For us Germans, that might be a little bit helpful. Um, because my cameraman sucks at English, so he doesn't have the ability to really read everything on here. Also, safety feature-wise, we're going to look at that once we're driving. It is a little bit interesting. It's like a Chinese self-driving, and it's not the greatest. I'm just going to put that out there. But there's a couple of things that you can see. Translation is also not the greatest because instead of just recuperation, it says energy feedback intensity. I don't know why they couldn't just have recharge in there. And then vehicle settings, you can just change some active suspension mode. So your suspension, your steering mode and stuff like that. You can change it to sport, whatever you want. But we can also quickly look at the vehicle image. That is the 360 degree camera. We have the door open so you can't see out the side right now. But you can see we have a 360 degree camera and it works very nice. It's not in the color of the car, which is unfortunate but it just allows you to just have some comfortable driving when you're in the city, which is nice. We do also have the climate control in here, which obviously is fairly nice. We also have heated and ventilated seats in the front as well as steering, he um, steering wheel, which is heated, and you can also adjust them for the back if you want. We also have air purification, which is nice. You want to get this down to around five. That's what the best value is. So you could theoretically put a quick purification on, which is going to just give you the fresh air out of there and actually smells like fresh air as well, which is pretty cool. I'm not going to do that right now because we have the door open. Um, so yeah, you can have that in there, which is fairly, fairly nice. So let's start off the drive with taking a look at the camera, which we already did take a look at, but we do also have this camera, which basically shows you what is underneath your car. Very good for off-roading, so you might not really need it while you're in the city. Um, we do also have a turning radius in here of 12.3 meters. That's actually a fairly good rate for a car that is um, five meters long. So it's obviously not going to be the most comfortable driving in the city, but you do have all the assistance features that you might just be fine off. Because the car is so long, it's going to stand out lots of the times in any parking spot. So therefore, you're not going to be, you're going to have to back forward or you're going to have to find a fairly big parking spot, which is just makes the car not very viable for city driving. However, we do actually have a quite a lot of safety features in here. Blind spot assistant, we do have adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist and lane centralization. But because, well, I'm not going to generalize it, but the Chinese technology is just not the greatest. I, we have turned off most of the safety features, for instance, the lane keeping assistant, because it just beeps at you every single time. If you're definitely driving over country roads and you go a little bit far to the right, it's just going to go beep, and then you're completely terrorized until the end of life. And if you don't turn that off, you're, you're going to hear, you're going to lose your hearing really quickly. Also, lanes keeping assistant doesn't work the greatest when you're driving um, through um, construction sites or in general, it's just not the greatest system. So honestly, safety features, you could theoretically just, just, just turn them off. That's going to be the most enjoyable ride you can get. Comfortable wise, this car is fairly comfortable. We do have a fairly good suspension here, which makes it, well, that guy is also on the brink of his life. Um, makes it fairly comfortable. You can also change in here. You can go into the um, mm -hmm. vehicle assistant and you have the smart chassis where we can change the adaptive suspension mode and the steering mode all down to comfort. And then you're just gonna have a fairly comfortable. There you go, that's one thing. Hold the steering wheel. If I let go for five seconds, even though I was on there with my right hand or left hand, it's gonna completely screw with you. And just that beeping sound always gets on when you, for instance, have lane keeping assist on, which is not the greatest. We do also have a couple of different modes in the car. For instance, we do have um, eco, sport, and normal mode. And we are gonna test out the sport now, which is we're gonna put everything into sport and brake assist also into sport. And now I just gotta wait for the right corner. So with 517 horsepower and also 700 newton meters of torque, you do get a good punch out of this. Look at this. So you can accelerate very fast and you wouldn't might expect that because the car is 2.25 tons, which is really heavy. But because of those 2.25 tons, it's not going to be the most fun car to drive around corners because it just doesn't feel that well interesting. Yeah, you do have that punch to it. The quantum capability is also fairly decent because you do have a 592 kilogram battery right down in the center, so you have a very good center of gravity. But it just doesn't feel that, like, I don't know, it just it lacks the fun that you get out of some other cars because this car is just so heavy. 
And also, the punch doesn't actually feel that great when, like, 0 to 60, 70, that was really good. But then afterwards, it's just, like, you still obviously have that punch, which is really good. But it just doesn't feel as aggressive as you might expect from 517 horsepower. I do have that sporty feeling to it as well, because this drive mode or the steering wheel is actually fairly direct as soon as you switch it into the drive mode of the or steering mode into sport. Let's go around this corner a little bit more sporty to see the cornering capabilities. I mean, it handles those corners really good. There was almost no tire screech in there and it was a f that was fairly fast. So you definitely have that feeling, but 2.25 tons just makes the car feel really heavy and just not that fun to drive around these corners. But if you want it, you can obviously do it, but it's supposed to be more luxurious and that's exactly what this car is. And there we go, ESC activated. Thank you very much. I love the sound as well. It's just wonderful. So what's my final verdict on the BYD Han? Well, it's a pretty redonkulous quality car, considering it's only gonna cost you 70,000 euros. That's still a lot of money, but the amount of car and quality that you get in there is pretty insane for that. If you compare it to other cars, there's nothing really in the range that you get for a full electric car. If they would fix a couple of technology features and stuff like that, then this car would be perfect. Otherwise, the safety features and stuff, they're just too annoying for me. Um, but if they fix that, then the German car manufacturers or the European car manufacturers should really be scared because this thing is really good for the price. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. We'll see you next time and bye-bye.